sides with Polly's undergarments and we're going to start with the petticoat and for this we're just using a plain poly cotton and the length that your petticoat needs to be is approximately 70 centimetres So for the frill we're going to be using a broidery on glaze, now this you can either buy gathered or flat, this is a gathered version and as you can see it's got a tape running through the top which we're going to cut off and you do need to be aware that broidery on glaze has a wrong side and a right side, now you'll see that the right side is a little bit more shiny so do make sure you bear that in mind when putting right sides together on your petticoat. So take your petticoat fabric and your gathered lace, make sure you've got right sides facing and just lay it on to the hem edge of the petticoat and just pop a couple of pins in. I usually do, do just a couple of pins to start with um, and then I just feed it through as I sew along. So we're going to do two rows of machine stitching, one about half a centimetre below where the tape is and then another row of stitching just slightly above that. And then so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to snip away and cut the tape off. And this will be close to the top line of stitching that I've done. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to zigzag along that top edge but if you've got an overlocker then you can do the whole thing in one fell swoop. And then you can iron it nice and flat. So before I do my top hem I just want to lay it and measure it against my doll. So there's her waistline there so I need to make sure that my hemline is going to be in that position and you can just sort of shorten lengthen that um, waistline case into you know whatever um, length you're going to want the finished petticoat you just sort of move it up and down just to see uh, what you prefer and do bear in mind if you've got a deeper lace that's going to make a difference to the actual uh, length of the poly cotton and now we're going to sew a small hem case in along the top for the elastic so just turn it over a couple of centimetres and pop some pins in. And do that all the way along. And I'm going to machine stitch along the bottom edge and also along the top. Okay, so I've done the hem casing for the elastic and I've sewn a stitch on the lower edge and also um, a small stitch along the top. So you're basically making like a casing for the elastic to go through. So for the elastic on your doll, you take your elastic and you basically lay it around her waist. then you need to snip off the excess elastic where they meet and again you need to remove a little bit more otherwise the elastic will be too loose so I like to I'm just going to snip a little bit more off there So you can see now that the elastic is meeting. Now you also need to slip, snip a little bit more away, so about a centimetre. Um, so just remove a little bit more of the elastic because if you don't you'll find that your petticoat will be too loose and baggy around her waist. 
so now you can see this time that the elastic doesn't meet um, and that there is a uh, little gap there. And then take a small safety pin and fasten it into the end of your elastic and finding the end of your casing start threading that elastic through. At this point just check that it's sitting right and that it's laying flat so that it will slide through nice and evenly. And when you get to this point, before you can see the elastic's going to disappear into the casing, you stop and you just take a couple of pins um, and position them to hold that elastic in place. Because we don't want that elastic moving anymore as we continue to thread through the casing. And then out it comes the other end. And what we're going to do is exactly the same as we did on the uh, start. So take your pin out, take your safety pin out, and then pull the elastic through so that it's just right on that edge and pop a couple of pins in. Then you're going to machine stitch backwards and forwards three or four times just to hold the elastic in place on both ends. So I've sewn along the elastic on the two sides um, and as you can see the elastic is all gathered and bunched in the middle. So I just need to spread those gathers out nice and evenly. So take the two ends and give it a nice big pull. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of gathering in the middle there. So I'm just going to spread that out and give it another pull, another big pull. And now all those gathers are nicely spaced out inside the casing. So what we need to do now is to join the two back seams together. So fold it over, right sides facing and then just align the top casing area and pop a pin in and then add some more pins down through the centre back and then once you've sewn that back seam together you can then neaten the edges with either um, pink and shears, zigzag or overlock. So I've sewn that back seam all nicely flattened and pressed out and I just did pink in along the edge there and I've also sewn the edges of those back seams down just to, to keep them nice and flat and in place. So yeah, so I'll just give you the finished length of my petticoat so there you can see from the top of the casing down to the hemline is 19 centimetres. So there you have a lovely little petticoat and I'm now just going to check for size on our dolly. you can just pull the petticoat up and down as you need to and there you can see she's got a lovely little dress with her petticoat showing. And so onto the panties and I've cut my panties out and as you can see I've also pinked along the lower edge and the top edge of the panties. So as you can see there's a higher 
back end and a lower front end. And the first thing we're going to do is the seam on the centre front. So I've sewn down the front centre seam and I've ironed it out nice and flat and I've also sewn a casing along the top edge, the waistline edge and I've also sewn casings along the lower edge where the uh, leg opening is. And so now we've just got a long piece with the centre seam sewn. And next we're going to take our elastic to thread through the casing. So same as before, uh, measure out your elastic, make it slightly shorter um, or narrower than what her waistline actually is. Thread on your safety pin and just start feeding this through the top casing. Do the same as before, put pins in place to stop the elastic from moving. And then the same for the leg elastic, measure that out on your doll uh, just to make sure it fits. You can keep that the same um, size as the doll's leg and then just thread that through the lower casings. All those elastic ends are now secured and I'm going to now go and sew in place. So now all those ends are nicely sewn in place and I'm just going to give each uh, section a little pull just to nicely even those gathers out. And yeah now all the gathers are nicely positioned. And next we're going to take our two back seams and we're going to match them together. And then pin in place. And then stitch down that seam and then neaten the edges as before. So I've now sewn that back seam and I've pinked the edges and I've ironed it flat. And then the last thing to do on her panties is just to sew up this underside crutch seam. It's quite small and quite fiddly, but line the centre of the seams together and just pop a couple of pins in on those outside edges. And then machine stitch along that little tiny area there. Don't worry if you get a little bit of pucker in, um, it won't notice. And so now you can just sew that crutch seam just along there. So there's the panties finished and I've just sewn down that back centre seam just to keep those uh, seams in place and the front and I've added a little bow um, on the front, it's easy to recognise which is front and back if you've got a little bow sewn there. 
So yeah, really sweet little pair of panties. And you could almost do a, uh, you know, a different pair for every outfit that she has with a different colour bow. So now moving on to her socks. Now, depending on what size socks you buy, it depends on whether you need to alter them or not. So if you were to purchase a newborn sock, which is the size that she's wearing here, you can see that there's no altering of the shape needed because they'll fit her perfectly. So that's a newborn size sock as opposed to a size 0-3, which you can see is considerably uh, longer than um, a newborn. So that, that size you're going to need to alter. So turn the sock inside out and place on her foot. And then just roll the cuff edge up and just make sure that the heel is aligned so that it's sitting nicely um, onto her heel. And then you can see you've got baggy excess at the front there which needs to be removed. Um, again, easily done. So just grab hold of that um, excess fabric at the front and pop a couple of pins in. This will just give you a rough guideline of where you need to do your stitching. Um, the sock is inside out at this point. And then just remove the sock and then just reposition um, your pins so that it's easier for sewing into that uh, curved shape. So that's basically the curved area that you're going to sew round and then once I've done one row of stitching I do a second row above and then I just cut off the excess and just do a little zigzag stitch um, all the way through. Okay so let's put her panties on and see how they fit her. And then next comes her petticoat. And then finally, her pretty little sleeveless dress.
to complete your Dolly's outfit, we we'll just add a lovely little pair of shop bought shoes. So there she is in her entirety. I do hope you've enjoyed the process and that you've learned a few new techniques along the way. And I do love to see your dolly creations on our group. And I must say I'm extremely proud of the results that you're achieving. So yeah, that's me signing off from this tutorial series. So, bye for now.